Welcome to the OncoTarget YouTube channel. This week I'll be introducing you to Dr. Kelber. He works with the Department of Biology at California State University Northridge in Northridge, California. Please enjoy. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Jonathan Kelber and I'm an assistant professor at the Cal State University Northridge campus in the Los Angeles area. I've been here for approximately five years and uh, prior to this I did my training in San Diego at the Salk Institute and UCSD's uh, Moore's Cancer Center. Uh, my laboratory here at Cal State Northridge is an NIH funded laboratory and we study cancer progression, metastasis and therapy responsiveness or the lack thereof in epithelial tumors and uh, in particular we're interested in more uh, a better understanding of how the growth factor, transforming growth factor, TGF-beta, uh, elicits its paradoxical effects on epithelial cancer such as pancreatic cancer. On this particular project uh, published in Oncotarget in uh, 2016 titled A Novel Method for RNA Extraction from FFPE Samples Reveals Significant Differences in Biomarker Expression Between Orthotopic and sub subcutaneous pancreatic cancer patient-derived xenografts, we have the opportunity to collaborate with uh, two industry partners, uh, Mark Brown and Bob Dobler at uh, Claremont Biosolutions and Robert Hoffman at Anti-Cancer Inc., as well as an academic collaborator of ours, uh, Michael Bouvet at the UCSD Morris Cancer Center. So as I'm sure the readers of Oncotarget can appreciate, pancreatic cancer is a devastating disease. Uh, the five-year survival rate for patients is just under 7%. And uh, as such, it's important to, for uh, basic translational and clinical researchers to get a better uh, molecular profile of this uh, disease so that uh, the... Uh, patients can be parsed out into uh, good and poor outcome categories as well as those who are responsive or less responsive to available therapies. And so to do this, um, one approach is to uh, retrospectively profile uh, the disease. And I'll talk a little bit about how that played a big part in the impetus for our current study. Additionally, uh, pancreatic cancer has a very um, well-developed stromal microenvironment that's very complex and so this adds additional uh, challenges to understanding and, and diagnosing or treating the disease. Um, it also underscores the importance for under looking at pancreatic cancer cells as they grow or they progress within the proper microenvironment. Um, such as the pancreas. And so um, we have a, several interests in our lab, as I mentioned earlier, but one of the long-term goals in our laboratory is to uh, profile the proteomes and transcriptomes of uh, patient samples in a retrospective fashion, as I earlier mentioned. Uh, we want to compare these molecular profiles to uh, linked clinical data, and we believe that by doing so, we can really understand the uh, complexities that are presented uh, in a disease such as pancreatic cancer. I think the importance of this is even further underscored or emphasized by the 2016 uh, Cancer Moonshot uh, Blue Ribbon Panel recommendations. One of the uh, 10 recommendations in quote, is to mine past patient data to predict future patient outcomes. Uh, so it's very important that we're, as a research community, uh, entering into these efforts. Now, one of the challenges, however, with this retrospective analysis has been to really recover sufficient high-quality uh, molecular uh, information from these banked samples, RNA, proteins, these types of macromolecules are highly degraded, and this is normally due to the uh, fixation and embedding process. Uh, formalin is used to fix, and paraffin is used to embed uh, patient samples 
And this is very helpful, obviously, in uh, clinical practice for pathologists. This is the standard uh, practice. But for the basic science researchers who are trying to access this uh, kind of trapped molecular information, it makes it very difficult. So to tackle this issue, we hypothesized that a tool known as the microhomogenizer that had been previously developed by Claremont Biosolutions uh, for tissue disruption could be uh, introduced into ongoing or current uh, methods that were available for extracting RNA from FFPE samples. Um, and that by doing so, we could recover more uh, high quality RNA. In fact, as we developed this protocol and as it's now published, we see almost a threefold increase in RNA quantity uh, from the same uh, starting sample size. And these RNA molecules that are recovered are uh, larger in length, suggesting that we're actually accessing some of the more trapped or previously inaccessible uh, longer, less degraded RNA molecules. And this, of course, has major implications for downstream next generation sequencing since uh, we really need uh, to get access to as much of the transcriptome as possible. Um, so we went a step further and we validated this method uh, with samples provided to us from our uh, clinical collaborators in San Diego. And they provided us with uh, xenograft samples uh, uh, from patient uh, or human pancreatic cancer uh, cells and uh, that were either grown in the subcutaneous or in the orthotopic microenvironment for us to then compare with the same cell samples grown in vitro. Now we specifically chose one particular cell line uh, to include in this in this study uh, known as FG uh, Nakamura et al. Uh, in 2007 published a study using these cells as well as some uh, more metastatic derivatives of these cells. And they uh, profiled the gene expression of these cells grown in different microenvironments, the same microenvironments that we were able to use in our study. So we felt like this would be a very uh, good control for us to see how the gene expression of uh, genes in our study was matching or otherwise not matching uh, what had been previously reported. And so what we found uh, very strikingly was that only when we used the microhomogenizer based protocol that we developed uh, could we faithfully reproduce the gene expression patterns for some well-known uh, regulators of pancreatic cancer. Uh, we went a step further then and we looked at some more novel genes that have been more recently characterized to contribute to pancreatic cancer progression or onset. And uh, we now have really valuable information about how those genes are changing in the context of uh, where these tumor cells are grown, whether they're grown in, and expanded in vitro or in vivo subcutaneously or orthotopically. Uh, for example, uh, one of the genes that my lab studies, PEAK1, it's a new kinase that we've been working on for about the last uh, seven or eight years. We now know its expression is almost a hundredfold more when those cells are expanded in the subcutaneous in vivo microenvironment. And so this really drives home the importance of understanding uh, really a context dependent role for what we may otherwise report across the board as uh, an important biomarker or therapeutic target in this cancer. Um, probably the biggest challenge in this study was early on as we were trying to identify uh, where within current FFPE RNA extraction protocols this microhomogenizer was best introduced. Uh, first authors Malachiya Hoover and Ives Damian, uh, they worked tirelessly to really um, test the different permutations of what eventually became our published protocol. And uh, while we're certainly aware that I'm, we're going to see probably some new, even improved iterations of this protocol, uh, we believe that what we've uh, established is certainly a, a great starting point. I also know that our collaborators at Claremont Biosolutions are 
continuing to develop their technology. Most recently, they have uh, converted the single-use kind of single-well micro-homogenizer and expanded that into a 96-well plate format. So this protocol can be applied really in a high-throughput fashion now. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're uh, certainly interested in scaling up this uh, work. And so we're working with our collaborators to now apply this on a large scale uh, so that we can get some statistically relevant information about uh, molecular uh, markers in what otherwise is a very uh, deadly malignancy. We're also taking a few other uh, approaches using proteomics and bioinformatics to predict uh, new diagnostic and therapeutic biomarkers. And so we're, we're hopeful that as we've done in the past with uh, PEAK-1, showing that it uh, regulates pancreatic cancer progression and therapy resistance, we're going to, over the next year or two, be able to report on uh, several new uh, diagnostic and therapeutic uh, targets in this disease. Thank you. By clicking the link below, you can learn more about the research discussed in the interview from Cover Paper of Volume 8, Issue 4. Thank you for watching.